All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about limits. And it says, motion and change are the very essence of life. Moving airbrushes against our faces. Rain falls on our heads. Birds fly past us. Plants spring from the earth, grow, and then die. And rocks thrown upward reach a maximum height before falling to the ground. The tools of algebra and trigonometry are essentially static. Numbers, points, lines, equations, functions, and graphs do not incorporate motion. The development of calculus in the middle of the 17th century provided a way to use these static tools to analyze motion and change. It took nearly 2,000 years of effort for humankind to achieve this feat, made possible by a revolutionary concept called limits. The invention of limits marked a turning point in human history, having as dramatic an impact on our lives as the invention of the wheel and the printing press. In this section, we introduce this bold and dramatic style of thinking about mathematics. Okay? All right. So, an introduction to limits. Suppose that you and a friend are walking along the graph of the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. They've graphed that, and it looks like a line with a hole at 2 because, of course, Mr. Denominator can never equal 0. So Mr. Denominator X can never equal 2. When it does, you get this hole in the graph. Because remember, if I factor the top, X plus 2, X minus 2, the X minus 2, it cancels. So there's a hole there instead of a full-blown asymptote. Okay, but anyway, it says, illustrates that you're walking uphill and your friend is walking downhill. Because 2 is not in the domain of the function, there's a hole in the graph at X equals 2. Warning signs along the graph might be appropriate. Caution, f of 2 is undefined. If you or your friend reach 2, you will fall through the hole and splatter onto the x-axis. So obviously there's a problem at x equals 2, but what happens along the graph of that function as you and your friend walk very, very close to x equals 2? What function value f of x will each of you approach? You can't ever reach it, because once you get there, you're going to fall through the hole, but what are you going to get really, really close to? One way to answer this question is to construct a table of function values to analyze numerically the behavior of f as x gets closer and closer to 2. Remember that you're walking uphill approaching 2 from the left side of 2. Your friend is walking downhill approaching 2 from the right side of 2. Thus, we must include values of x that are less than 2 and values of x that are greater than 2. So really, what, what limits start, well, what we're an introduction to limits, is what happens as you get closer and closer to 2, and what happens as she gets closer and closer to 2? Not at 2, because at 2 we know they're going to fall through the hole, but what are they getting really, really close to? Well, you can see from the graph that they're both getting really, really close to y equals 4. But we're going to look at several ways to um, analyze that or look at what happens when you get really, really close to 2. We have limit properties, we have direct substitution or some algebraic techniques, and then we can use tables and graphs. So first let's talk about limit properties. It says limit notation in its description. Suppose that f is a function defined on some open interval containing the number a. The function f may or may not be defined at a. The limit notation, the limit as x approaches a, the function approaches some constant, some l. It's read the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals the number l. This means that as x gets closer to a but remains unequal to a, the corresponding values of f of x, the y values, get closer and closer to that number l. Okay, so your properties of limits. It says if the limit as x approaches c of x of x, f of x and the limit as x approaches c of g of x both exist, then you have your sum rule which says if you take the limit of a sum, you can take the limits of the add-ins and then add those together. Same with subtraction, multiplication, um, scalar multiplication, division, provided that that bottom one isn't zero. Um, your power rule, you can pull, pull the power outside. Um, the root rule, if you're taking the root of some function, um, for n greater than or equal to 2 is a positive integer, provided that those are real numbers. So you can't have negatives under there and all that stuff. All right, so it says we're going to learn in example 10 that the limit as x approaches 0 
of sine x over x equals 1. It says use this fact along with the limit properties to find the following limits. So this says the limit as x approaches 0. Well, they must be telling me this for some reason, so I probably need to get it to look like that. Well, I can split this apart and say that that's the limit as x approaches 0 of x over x plus sine x over x. Well, that would be, because of my sum rule, the limit as x approaches 0 of x over x plus the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. x divided by itself is 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 1. And then this is going to be limit of x approaches 0 of sine x over x. Okay, first rule you need to know is that when you take the limit of a constant, it's just a constant. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 is that constant 1. And we know from up here that we are going to trust for right now. We'll understand why later, but for right now we're just going to trust that when you take the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, that's 1. So my limit is 1 plus 1, or 2. The limit as x approaches 0 of x plus sine x over x equals 2. And we could look at the graph and the table, which we will do later. All right, so let's try this one. Well, I notice a big old Pythagorean theorem up here. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. And then I can write that as the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x times sine x over x, because that would still be sine squared over x squared. My product rule says that I can write that as the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. This, according to this, is 1 times this is 1 again, and 1 times 1 is 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine squared x over x squared is 1. Okay, all right, um, on C we have the limit of the square root of sine x over x. We have the quotient rule that says that's going to be the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of sine x. I'm not using this rule yet. This is the uh, radical rule. When you take the radical of a quotient, you can take the radical of the quotient instead of them separately. Okay, so then I can say, because of the root rule, that that equals the square root of the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. Well, we know that that is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of sine x over the square root of x equals 1. Alright, so that's one way we can use properties to help us evaluate limits. We have another way, um, it's called direct substitution, or plugging in, okay, direct substitution. This only works if your functions are continuous. They have to be continuous for direct substitution to work. Okay, and we know, okay, it says, recall from section 1.2 that a function is continuous at a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. This means that the limit at a of the function can be found by plugging in a, provided the function is continuous at a. The condition of continuity is essential when employing this strategy. For example, plugging in zero to the last three examples we just tried wouldn't work if I, because these are not continuous functions. This has a hole, or not a hole, but it has, it's going to have an asymptote at 0, at 0, and at 0. Alright, so you're going to have these discontinuities. If I tried, if I just tried direct substitution, I would have 0 plus sine 0, not theta, 0, over 0. Well, even if I did on top, that would be 0 plus 
sine of 0 is 0 over 0. I get 0 over 0. We know division by 0. Division by 0 is illegal, so we can't do that. Same with here. Once I plug 0 into the bottom, I have division by 0, which is illegal. Same here. Once I plug in 0 for x, I have division by 0, which is illegal. So direct substitution only works if our function is continuous. Okay? So this one says find the limits. All right? So I'm going to try. It says to do this by substitution. If, if they didn't tell me that this was going to work, I would need to look at that graph first and make sure that it is... Um, continuous. But they're telling me to do this by substitution, so I'm assuming they've already checked for continuity. So what we do then is we literally plug in um, zero. Well, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our properties because when I simplify this, I can say that I have the limit as x approaches zero of e to the x minus the limit as x approaches 0 of tan x divided by the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x squared because I'm using that power rule too which says I can pull that negative outside. So now when I plug that in here the limit as x approaches 0 I'm going to do direct substitution is going to be e to the 0 minus tan 0 over cosine 0 squared. Well, anything to the zero degree is one. Tan of zero, if I'm at zero degrees, y divided by x would be zero divided by one, which is zero. And if I go to zero and I do cosine, cosine is one, so one squared, and I get one minus zero over one, which is one divided by one, which is one. So the limit as x approaches zero of e to the x minus tan x over cosine squared x equals 1. Okay, so if we do b, again, I want to use my properties to rewrite this, and this is going to be the limit as n approaches 16 of the square root of n divided by the limit as n approaches 16 of log base 2 of n. So if I substitute on top, that's going to be the square root of 16, and on bottom, that's going to be log base 2 of 16. Well, on top, that's going to be 4, and on bottom, if I break 16 down, by 2 is 8, by 2 is 4, by 2 is 2, I get log base 2 of 2 to the 4, that cancels, I get 4 over 4, which is 1. So the limit as n approaches 16 of the square root of n over log base 2 of n equals 1. Alright. Uh, if we try this one, we are going to have the limit. I don't have quotients or products or sums or differences, so I can just do my substitution. That's going to be 3 minus 1 to the 12, which is 2 to the 12 which is 4,096. And then as x approaches 3, of x minus 1 to the 12 is 4096. Okay, if I try this one, again, no quotients, products, sums, differences to rewrite. So I just do substitution. That's going to be negative 2 cubed minus a negative 2 plus 5. That's negative 8 plus 4, 2 plus 5, that's going to be negative 6, plus 5 is negative 1. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x cubed minus x plus 5 equals negative 1. Alright, so if I try this one, I'm going to plug in 2, so that's going to be 2 minus 4 to the 2 thirds. Oh, I'm approaching negative 2. Negative 2 minus 4. That's going to be negative 6 to the 2 thirds. That, if I type in the calculator, is approximately 3.30. So let's say the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x minus 4 to the 2 thirds equals approximately 3.30. Okay.
or if I left it in radical, it would be the cube root of negative 6 squared, which would be the cube root of 36, which if you break it down, you don't have enough to get anything out. Alright, so if we do this one, I'm going to do direct substitution if it exists, so I'm going to plug in pi, natural log, of sine pi over 2. Well, sine of pi over 2, if you go to pi over 2 and hit sine, that's 0. Uh, sorry, that's 1. So I have the natural log of 1. And if you type in the natural log of 1, you get 0. Alright. This one, they want me to find the limit as x approaches a. What the heck? Well, they're just telling me to replace the x's with a. So, I would say that that's a squared minus 1 over a squared plus 1. And there's nothing else I can do. Even if I tried to factor the top, a plus 1, a minus 1, there's no such thing as sum of squares. Well, there is, but it'd be a plus or minus 1i. Alright, so nothing cancels, so that's it. The limit as x approaches a of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 is a squared minus 1 over a squared plus 1. That's as far as I can go. Alright, so now next it says explain why you cannot use substitution. That must mean only one thing. I can't use substitution if this thing is in continuous, which means if I plug it in the bottom, or plug it in somewhere in the function, I, I get illegal stuff, like negatives under even roots, the zeros in the denominator, and sure enough, if I do direct substitution, I'm going to have 3 squared minus 9 over 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 15. That's 9 minus 9. 9 plus 6 minus 15 is 0 over 0. Division by 0 means that I cannot do substitution. So then it says find it algebraically if it exists. That's a hint that you need to try and factor the top and the bottom. In this case, I can do both. So I can factor the top into x plus 3 times x minus 3. I can factor the bottom into x plus 5 times x minus 3. The x minus 3's cancel. And now, if I do direct substitution and plug in 3, I get 3 plus 3 on top, 3 plus 5 on the bottom, which gives me 6 over 8, which gives me 3 over 4. So I would say the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 3 fourths. If you look at a graph, as you approach 3, your y value is going to get closer to 0.75. Alright, so if I do this one, again, just check the denominator. If I plug in 2 in the denominator, I get 0, division by 0 is illegal, so I cannot use substitution. So if I try and factor the limit as x approaches 2, on top there's four terms, so I'm going to go 2 by 2, x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. GCF and x squared leaves x minus 2. GCF of positive 1 leaves x minus 2. GCF by x minus 2 leaves x squared plus 1 over x minus 2. Those cancel. And now the drama's gone. So I'm finding the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 1. So now if I just do direct substitution, I get 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. So I say the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 2 is 5. If we look at the graph or the table of that, it's going to get close to 5 when x gets close to 2. Alright, now we have one that's going to give us a little bit of an insight into what's coming up with. Okay, I can't use substitution because if I plug in negative 2 plus 2, I get 0 in the denominator. Division by 0 is illegal, so substitution is going to work. The problem is, how do I factor this? How do I get rid of those bars? Well, this is what we talk about when we talk about absolute value. If you remember the de definition, absolute value, everybody always just thinks that it makes whatever's inside positive, but that's not true. 
I mean, it, it kind of works as a definition up until now, all right? But what this really means is that that's the distance from zero, which I could go six units to the right, which would be positive six, but I can also go six steps to the left, which would be negative six. So the absolute value isn't actually six. It's actually six to the right, six to the left. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing is, you know, this is kind of a piecewise function, okay? If, if, if I'm looking at the absolute value of x squared minus 4, if I look at it for x is less than 2, in other words, if I'm picking, I mean, x is less than negative 2, sorry. If I'm picking x is less than 2, then I'm going this way which would mean I'm going to the left, so I'm going to take the bars off, and it would just be negative x squared minus 4. Whereas, if I do, if I pick x's that are bigger than negative 2 or equal to, all right, then I'm going to the right, which means I'm going to the positive, so I'm just going to take the bars off and not use a negative. So there's my piecewise function that goes with absolute value. Okay, the absolute value is going to be a negative this if I pick values of x smaller than 2, and it's going to be positive that if I pick values greater than 2. So what we end up doing is we have to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left, and as x approaches negative 2 from the right. If those two limits are the same, then the limit exists. If they don't come out the same, then they don't. So if I find the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left, that means I'm using the negative x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. And so now if I plug in my negative 2, I'm going to get a negative negative 2 squared minus 4 over, oh, I got to factor that because obviously direct substitution is going to make those cancel. So on top, it's going to be a negative, and then that's going to factor into x plus 2, x minus 2 over x plus 2, which those cancel, and that gives me a negative x minus 2. So if I take the limit of that as x approaches negative 2 from the left, that's going to be a negative, negative 2 minus 2, which is going to be a negative, negative 4, which is going to be 4. So coming from the left, this function is getting close to 4. Coming from the right, x approaches negative 2 from the right, we use this function. So it's x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. Factor x plus 2, x minus 2 over x plus 2, those cancel. So I'm taking the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of x minus 2. So if I plug in negative 2 minus 2, I get negative 4. And since these do not equal, the limit does not exist. Okay? If you, approach, if you approach a number from two different sides of the same function and they don't approach the same number, then we say the limit does not exist. Okay? Another way a limit doesn't exist is if, okay, I can't use substitution because if I plug in zero on the bottom, that's division by zero, which is illegal. But there's nothing else I can do. I can't factor the top. I can't cancel an x. I can't do anything. So, the limit does not exist. Alright, on the next one, we have the limit, and we're going to, we're going to, uh, again, if it didn't, it didn't specify to use direct substitution, so I'm going to try it. As long as I don't get zero on the bottom, it's probably continuous, so it'll work. If I do get zero on the bottom, then we'd have to think of something else. So, if I just plug in zero, I get 3 sine zero minus 4 cosine 0. Uh, I'm going to play zeros with like thetas because they don't want to look like O's. Um, over 5 sine 0 plus cosine 0. 
we go to the unit circle and we go to zero degrees, the coordinates are one, zero. So that's going to be sine of zero is zero, minus four, cosine of zero is one, five, sine of zero is zero, plus cosine zero is one. That gives me negative four over one, which gives me a limit of negative four. So if we try this one and I try direct substitution, I'm going to have the square root of 27 plus 9 over log base 3 of 27. That's going to give me the square root of 36. If I rewrite 27 with 3, so that's 3 cubed. That's 6. Those cancel. That's 3, which gives me 2. Alright. So if we look back at the problem from the beginning, what they want me to do is to find the limit of this function as x approaches 2. Well, if I factor the top, x plus 2, x minus 2, direct substitution isn't going to work because we'd get 0 on the bottom, right? So those would cancel, and I do limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2, plug in 2, and I get 4, and you can see, as they both get closer to 2 on the x-axis, he's coming this way, she's coming this way, they're both getting closer and closer to a height of 4. Alright, so we are done, happy homework, and I will see you next time.